And welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Two Minutes with Typhoon. Two Minutes with me, your humble host, the Fantasy Typhoon, a.k.a. the Mentalist, a.k.a. your favorite analyst. Favorite analyst. Oh, you got it right. Today's spotlight is Trey Burton. <laughs> Trey Burton. One, two, Trey. I've been getting a lot of feedback, man, uh, for Trey Burton. Top fool with Trey at, man. Top fool with Trey Burton. The mentalist. Come on, man. Trey Burton. Yo, TFT. Give me Trey Burton, man. And, uh, okay, here it is. Look. Whew, man, life caught up to me. That's why the video slowed down for a bit. Please forgive me, but. I got to pay the bills, man. I got to eat. I got to, you know, got to support myself. I got to keep moving outside of the fantasy realm. You know, life happens sometimes. You got to do what you got to do. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Uh, it's raining in the background down here in the sunny state of Orlando, Florida. It's raining cats and dogs at the moment. So you might hear a couple of thunderstorms in the background, but uh, I, I need to get this out uh, Sunday afternoon. Um, sitting here in Typhoon Studios, Typhoon's TV. Uh, Fantasy Football 101 Studios. Uh, look, uh, quick disclaimer, you know how we do. Uh, this is recommendations. We're not end all be all by all means. We just want to throw some information out there that you might not be getting from your mainstream or in social media. Uh, you know, because information is king. Information is king. The person who wins the trade is the person that has the most accurate information. There's no weird fans will buzz about it. And uh, make sure you comment, like, comment, give me whatever you need to give me. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. All right, start the two minutes on Trey Burton. Look, 26, uh, 6'3", 235, coming out of Florida. Ran a 4'6", 2, or 4'6", uh, Seen a little bit of both. Um, here's a little caveat for most, most folks. Uh, probably don't know he played um special teams in philly he played special teams while backing up zach Ertz. so the first question is before we get dive into zach Ertz and really dig in and, and pull out the nuggets what system is he going to be in you know and, and i'm sitting back researching and looking and looking and reviewing nagy and trying to see what he's going to do and what i've come up with is a West Coast, modified West Coast offense with RPO tendencies. Now, that's the first clue. The RPO offense is the first clue. Okay, because, you know, I, I, I've been doing research and I read articles of Allen Robinson breakout, right? I've seen it. I've seen Adam Shaheen breakout. I've seen it. I've seen Tyreek Cohen breakout. I've seen it. I've seen Anthony Miller's breakout. I've seen it. Anthony Miller uh, breakout articles. I've seen Taylor Gabriel breakout articles. I mean, I've just seen uh, Adam Shaheen breakout articles, if I didn't say that already. I've just seen so many breakout articles. Now, I'm not knocking the articles. They're good reads. But what I'm, tr what I'm, what I'm here saying is that Mitchell Trubisky can't carry all that. Now, if it was Peyton Manning, you know, if it was Peyton Manning, um, Tom Brady at quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, uh, you know, or, you know, uh, Drew Brees or somebody of that stature, okay, I could see him carrying, you know, three 1,000-yard uh, players. But... We shouldn't expect Mr. Trubisky to carry that much. So, in other words, what I'm saying is all those folks can't break out. And for the simple fact that it is RPO elements already pretty much destroys, you know, the big body X type thing, which Allen Robinson has going for himself. Uh, you know, it kind of eliminates the slot because when, when an RPO concepts, when that ball goes into the belly of how. All right, let, let me, let's see. Let's let's take a look right quick. RPO elements. Adam Shaheen stack line. Um, Jordan Howard, Mitchell Trubisky. 
All right. Right there. When that ball goes right there, it's it's all depend it's all contingent upon man zone cover two, cover three, cover zero, halves, quarters. Where the ball goes is all dictates upon what's, what the defense does. So that takes away from Allen Robinson's huge uh, uh, height. It takes his height way away. Uh, let's see. Let, let's let's mimic this offense kind of like what you have over there with the Eagles. All right. Your Tyree Cohen could double as your Corey Clement. Your Jordan Howard could double as Jay Ajayi. Your Allen Robinson, Chicago, can double as Alshon Jeffrey. Your Anthony Miller, Taylor Gabriel type can double as Nelson Aguilar. Trey Burton can double as Zach Ertz. You see what I'm trying to say? Let's try to interchange this out because Philly runs West Coast RPO elements. And it's outstanding what it does because basically it's unguardable. And when you understand the uh, RPO concepts from the from the inception, it's basically three pass plays and it's basically three run plays that are the base and then you build a million plays off of it so there are three run plays and there are three pass plays that is the base of the offense that is that at, at the foundation of the offense and then Nagy go rebuilds on it and then builds on it and then builds on it and builds on it then you have a full playbook of what you're being asked to do and as you can see here uh, Shaheen has the edge, has the advantage here. But you don't know, right now, you don't know where the ball is going because it's all up to Rubinsky and what he sees. Right here, it looks like Adam Shaheen would be the answer. No. Trubisky sees something different. Look, he keeps it. Trubisky can even run it on RPO uh, concepts. So what I'm trying to say is the offense is so diverse Uh you know, we don't know who's going to get the ball. Like, let's say a traditional pro set offense, you know, kind of what they have in Carolina. You kind of know the X receivers getting ready to get the ball. You know, the, the, the play that calls are designed around the X receiver when you have a traditional pro set offense. So that kind of gives you a little bit more of a heads up and a little bit more of a jump on what's coming down the pipe. Now, Trey Burton will be playing the Zach Ertz role or the Travis Kelce role, if you will. Uh, the U tight end in Nagy system. Now, when you see this, it's another monkey wrench that's thrown into the, the whole uh, engine. Is that now, instead of, uh, what I want to say, now instead of Trey Burton fighting Shaheen for reps, which is what social media and everybody thinks, okay, he's a tight end, so he's going to have to fight Shaheen, no. Shaheen's not his problem. His problem now, because now he becomes what they call the jumbo slot. So now he has to worry about Anthony Miller, Gabriel, and Kevin White, or the whoever takes that number two receiver. The, now Trey Burton is coming in as your W, U, or slot, a big slot, jumbo slot. You see what I'm saying? He's not a tight end. He, he's a tight end by name and by designation. But when he's on basically on the field, he's a jumbo slot receiver now. So he's not a tight end is what I'm trying to get you to see. So now he he's not fighting Shaheen. You see what I'm trying to say? I hope you get it. I hope I explained that enough. I, like I said, uh, somebody asked me to do a video on it, and I will when I get to it. But right now, I've just been too swamped and too deep. Now, with all that being said, Trey Burton did sign a four-year, 32 mil, 22 guaranteed contract, which is impressive. And we here at Fantasy Football 101 would not be surprised if Trey Burton leads the leads them in leads them in fantasy points. Over Allen Robinson, over Tariq Cohen, over Anthony Miller, over Gabriel, over Kevin White. Basically, he could come in second. Allen Robinson and him tied uh, kind of close to each other for most receptions and fantasy points for, uh, from the Chicago Bears type uh, 
from the Chicago Bears offense is not far-fetched. Shaheem is still raw, so Shaheem has a way to go. Even though Shaheem development up over the season could throw a monkey wrench into some of what Trey Burton has to do. But right now, grab Trey Burton. Trey Burton has top seven tight end potential right now as of this day due to Matt Nagy, due to the RPO concepts, due to Mitchell Trubisky looking for his tight end early and uh, plays being designed for Burton. Burton, as you can see here from some of his highlights, he is an excellent route runner. He's a red zone threat. Like I said, he's uh, 6'3", 235. He's 26 years old. Get him. We go.